that we're going to do an identity um, uh, demonstration using the APIs uh, as well as um, I'm going to show you data sites and how they work, and we're going to show you some of the manual processes that you would follow if you wanted to create a, a, a link to a test. So I've logged into our dashboard here. If you're an ID Tech customer, you'd be familiar with this dashboard. Um, I'm actually in the view of ID Tech tests. This is a this is a brand new demo account that we set up. So I don't have any ID Tech results listed here in this view. Over here, you'll see that I have a verify tab. And on that verify tab, I have three things that I can do. I can go create a test link. I can see test links that I've created that haven't been run. And I can see test results. If I go into the test results, I'll get a list of tests that we have run within this account, most of which we've run during the Connect conference today. Um, but I'm going to spend a little bit of time on the create test link. So Ben mentioned that you can do many of the steps relative to generating a test and sending a link to someone manually, and that's what we're going to do right now. So I'm going to click on create test link. And you get the simple screen here that Ben showed earlier. Uh, we can come in. And I'll just type in Frank as a as an examinee name. These other fields aren't required, uh, but just for the sake of the the demo, I will type in an ID. And then down here, I can choose from uh, some existing tests that I have associated with this account. So if I click on the drop down here, you'll see the tests. So I have some tests in Spanish that we showed earlier today, and some tests in English. Uh, just for the purposes of this demo, um, I'm going to click on the short demo test that deals with illegal drug use. So this would be like a, a pre-employment test that you'd give to law enforcement. And I'm just going to select that and say submit. So what it's done is it's generated a link that I can send to someone. And if they click on it, it will prompt them to download the app and run the test. You'll notice that I have three options here after I've created a link. Uh, right from here, I could start the test. Now, if I clicked on this from my computer, it would tell me that I'm, I'm on a computer instead of on a mobile device. If I had actually done this from a browser on my cell phone in preparation for proctoring a test, I could um, click on start test and it would recognize them on my phone. It would launch the Verify app and it would start the test. I could also copy it. So if I copied uh, the link to the test, I could then go paste it in to maybe a texting app uh, from my computer where I send the link to you. And the third option is to email the link. So if I click on that, it just launches my default email application that I have on this computer. And this is the link that you see. So if I were to send that to you, you could click on it and take it. So this would be one way that you could do a demo. Russ will show you a way you can do a demo right on your phone here at the end. If I wanted to send you a link to take a numbers test, I could email the link to you and go through this process that you see here, and you could take the numbers test. OK, so that's, uh, let me just say OK here. Um, you'll notice that I'm in the view of test links that I've created um, uh, that that um, that haven't been run. And you'll see here, um, there's Frank and the ID that I typed in, the name of the test. You can see the time at which I created it. And I could come back here and copy the link or access this page from my cell phone and click start test and take it from here. OK, let me just go quickly show you data sites now. Once again, uh, click on the create test link. And. Uh, um, type in a different name here. Just to keep these separate, and in this case, I am going to select uh, a test that I have that has those variables, the squiggly brackets in it. Um, that indicate, you know, this is a string that needs to be replaced with something. 
Well, let's choose this short demo identity validation data sites test. And you'll notice that when I click that, it expands out a bunch of fields. So it looks at the test and it recognizes that I have a field, a variable field called first name and last name and eye color. Um, and it just goes through the test and it looks at the questions. So these are questions here that, that mention um, the person's name, whatever the variable is that I'm typing in here. So once again, this is a manual process. You could run an identity verification test from here um, where you dynamically, you know, you, you create the test with these variables in it and you get this automatically to where I can come in here and say, well, the person I want to test is uh, has a first name of um, John and the last name is Jones. OK, actually, before I do that, I've typed in John here, um, and I can click on this plus sign that Ben was talking about. Notice how it filled in every occurrence where I have a variable field called first name. So here and here got filled in. Let's do the same for the last name. We're going to type in Jones here, and I'm going to hit the plus sign, and you'll watch. You'll see it filled it in there and there. And the last field that I have is uh, eye color. And I'm just going to type in blue, hit the plus sign, and you'll see that blue has been filled in. So now if I click submit, we'll generate the link. And just as I showed you before, um, I can start it. If I'd done this from my phone, I can copy it and text it to you. I can email it. But the idea is that if you go back to this list, uh, and see the test links that I have created. Um, there's there's the one I created, and um, it's ready to go. And it will inject uh, where it says, you know, my my eyes are blue. It, I mean, it will say my eyes are blue. Uh, it will say, is your name Megan? And go from there. OK, so let's jump now to um, an actual site. Now, this is a site that we've constructed, so it's on the web, and uh, our goal is to make this available to you um, that you can use as a sandbox if you're going to develop your own um, uh, implementation that's very similar, maybe run your own demos. Um, and we've created two demos with the APIs that have automated this process of creating a link and sending the link out. So um, uh, the first one I'm going to do is this em employment uh, screening uh, test. And the idea here is that someone goes to your website, they fill out the job application, and you want to automatically send them a link that they can click on and take a test. You're not using any variables. It is a standard test that everyone gets. It asks the same questions. But you want to easily um, uh, send it to them. So the way this works is I'm going to act uh, as if I were Russ, and Russ is applying for a back-end back -end services or back-end server developer position that this company has posted on their website. So he comes in here and he fills out the the fields, he types in his first and last name, puts his email address in and his phone number. And um, we've made this international aware, so I'll put a plus sign in there so it knows it's a US based number. Got uh, Russ put in his address here and and he could uh, drag and drop his resume over, right? So he's gone to the website, filled out the application. And that's it. Um, it's using the API to say when Russ clicks apply, automatically text to this number, the uh, verify link, and automatically send him an email. It actually does both. So I'm going to click apply. Notice up here, just for a brief second, it's creating the test. And the test has been created. So I'm going to stop sharing now. Okay. Okay. 
<clears throat> I will go to my messaging app. There's a link there that's new. When I click on it, hopefully you can see that. Um, it asked me to um, load the app, which I'll do. Oh, sorry, I do this every time. Open. It opens the app, it downloads the test, and it did it so fast, uh, it's even hard to see. It opened the app and it downloaded the test contents to my phone. The next step, I am I am presented with the EULA agreement, the end user license agreement, which I know all of you do as I do. We read it about this fast anytime it's presented. The next is a consent form. If you're a polygraph examiner, I detect service provider, you probably use consent forms. It's actually a best practice. Get the examinee to agree that it's voluntary to take the test and a few other things. Um, so we we present that. Oops, you have to read that one. The next screen is a message indicating, and we use the flashlight of the phone during the test. One of the reasons for that is to illuminate darker colored eyes and to illuminate a room if it's dark. So we give a notice here that um, some people are, are light sensitive. And if that's the case, be aware. I'm just going to admit or accept that I, I'm aware. It did a little quick check right there. It was very fast. You didn't notice it. It checked to ensure that my my volume is up. Yep, it's up. That I have enough processing power or disk uh, memory, I should say, and battery life. You have to have at least 20%. We don't want the test to drop during uh, because of battery. This screen here says, turn on, do not disturb. It's a good idea to not get interrupted with a phone call while you're testing because that could stop the test. And if you stop a test in between or in the, meal, in the middle, well, any time during the test, um, you'll have to start over because that will nullify the test. We, we won't know where you stopped, what was going on. So I accept or I confirm that I've turned on do not disturb. The next is to start the test. And guess what I did, Todd? This test is based on the idea that a deceptive person will have a difficult time answering the question. I'm in proctor be. mode. <laughs> Some deceptive people answer too slowly. Other deceptive people make lots of mistakes. Well, so what would you suggest? To answer or make too many mistakes, you will fail the test. If you do not hear a tone after you answer and you hear a time limit expired, speak up or you will fail the test. You will now take the truth verification test. To begin, say start. 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 Yeah, you start. gotta get in the right spot, Russ. You're not in the right spot. Regarding the use of illegal drugs, I am innocent. True. On the topic of committing violent crimes, I am clean. True. As to having ties to terrorist groups, I am responsible. False. Concerning the use of illegal drugs, I am guilty. False. On the topic of having ties to terrorists, I am innocent. True. With regard to committing a violent crime, I am guilty. False. Concerning the issue of having terrorist ties, I am guilty. False. Test completed. At that moment, the test data is processed. The measurements from my eye, eyes and other things. Um, it's so, processing that, uploading, yes? Yeah, so I just mentioned, um, uh, Russ forgot to flip his phone back from proctor mode to solo mode. Uh, under normal circumstances, because he filled out a job application and we're sending him a link to take a test for the first time, it would have forced him to go through that tutorial that I showed in, in, in my presentation at the beginning. Um, he had uh, shown a demo in proctor mode. The demo in proctor mode assumes that there is a proctor and it it lets the proctor see whether, uh, in this case, Russ's face is in the right position. It doesn't tell Russ to put the phone in the right position because it's presumed that you have a proctor. There are cues on the phone that show you whether you need it, need to move the phone up or down and so forth. Usually, you know, you'd have it in a selfie stick to do that. Um, so anyway, you got to see a, uh, a proctor mode uh, demonstration on the next test. We'll, uh, between now and then, we'll have Russ
flip his phone uh, back to solo mode um, so that you can see how that works. After the data was processed and uploaded, I get a message that says, thank you, back to home. And when you do that, you're back. OK, so um, I'm going to uh, click on my demo drop down here and choose our identity verification site. And this looks similar to the job employment site. The difference is this, uh, this demo assumes this is a government site. Uh, um, and uh, it, it wants you uh, as an individual to provide some information from which they are going to try to confirm your identity before they grant you access to the site. And so I'm going to follow the same process that I did before. Just assume that I am Russ accessing this site. Um, I'm going to put in my information as Russ. Uh, you'll notice that there are a couple of different fields here. So you do have a phone number, and that's required to, uh, this is Russ's cell phone number, where I'm going to text this to him. Uh, it's now prompting for some PII, like uh, his date of birth. Uh, we're not making this a required field, but one of the fields that is required and that's pertinent to the test is eye color. So um, this is one of those data site fields or variable fields. And I'm going to type in green. Um, Russ has green eyes that would show up on his driver's license uh, if he had to submit a copy of that. Um, and um, when he gets to the test, just pay attention to what it's asking. It's going to ask him specifically, are you Russ Warner? And some of the questions are going to ask if his eyes are green. So with this, let's go ahead and click submit. It's again creating the test here. And the test has been created. So I'm going to stop sharing, and Russ should immediately get a text. It takes five seconds for the text to come through. Boom, there it is. There it is. I'm going to accept the new test. Let me load the app. It loads very quickly, downloaded the test. I'm not going to explain accepting the EULA again or the consent form again. After I go through these first few Log logistical paperwork types of things. Um, soon the tutorial will begin. This test monitors your eyes to determine truthfulness. Follow these instructions for best results. Take the test indoors and avoid direct light sources such as windows, TVs, and computer screens, which can affect test results. Take the test in a quiet place without interruption. Sit comfortably and rest your elbow on a table. You need to hold your phone steady for about five minutes. Listen to instructions and answer verbally. Do not use earbuds or headphones. When instructed, remove eyeglasses. Contacts are OK. Reading is not required. When instructed, flip the phone upside down with the back camera at the bottom facing you. Position the middle of the phone level with your eyes. Hold the phone about a phone length away. You will be alerted if the phone is out of position. Don't cover the camera with your hand or fingers. The phone's light will be enabled during the test. Do not look directly at it. Look halfway up the phone right above the camera. The tutorial is finished. Remember that is the experience the self-administered person will get. It says on this button, start practice test, which I will allow. The light came on. One, you have participated in selling a stolen identity. Two, if your legal name is Russ Warner. And three, whether your natural eye color is green. You will now take the practice test. To begin, say start. Start. Remove any eyeglasses now. Flip the phone upside down with the back camera at the bottom and facing you. Once the phone is in the correct position, the practice test will begin. Move the phone closer to your face. Move the phone closer to your face. You are in position. The practice test will now begin. Remember to answer verbally. Regarding cell phones, I can see one right now. True. In regard to large screen TVs, I am looking at one right now. 
False. You have finished the practice test. To begin the actual test, say start. Start. This test is based on the idea that a deceptive person will have a difficult time answering the questions quickly and accurately. Some deceptive people answer too slowly. Other deceptive people make lots of mistakes. So, if you take too long to answer or make too many mistakes, you will fail the test. If you do not hear a tone after you answer and you hear a time limit expired, speak up, or you will fail the test. You will now take the truth verification test. To begin, say start. 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 No face detected. Move the phone into position. Move the phone closer to your face. In terms of my legal name, it is Russ Warner. True. On the topic of the natural color of my eyes, it is green. True. As to selling stolen identities in the past, I am responsible. False. About my legal name, it is not Russ Warner. False. On the topic of selling a stolen identity, I am innocent. True. Concerning the natural color of my eyes, it is not green. False. Concerning the sale of stolen identities, I am guilty. False. Test completed. You can look at the screen now. However, do not close the app until the test is uploaded. Same process is occurring. The measurements are uploaded to the server. Sorry, process first uploaded to the server. That's happening now. When it finishes, I will get the little message that says thank you. And I'll turn the time. Do you want to? Go back to you, Todd, or are we going to do the other? Yeah, uh, but let's go take a look at the reports while you okay. get set up to yep. do the next part. All right. And um, let's go back into our dashboard. As I mentioned, there is a place to create links, to um, see what links have been created and see test results. So let's go to our test results. And you'll see the first test that we ran. This was our short demo test dealing with illegal drug use. You can see what time it was run. You can see the score. Uh, because this is a demo where we're only asking two questions about each of the topics in the test, um, it uh, is hard coded to, to score a 99 uh, since it's a demo. But let's uh, go ahead and open it up. And we'll see the report. You'll notice that Russ moved the phone away from his face to move it closer to the camera uh, and the microphone so that you could hear it. Uh, you'll notice that on that second test, the identity verification verification test, it wouldn't continue because it wasn't detecting his face. We randomly capture um, four photos during the at different times, uh, random times during the course of the exam. The first photo was snapped when Russ had moved the phone uh, back closer to the camera uh, where it wasn't on his face. And so we don't get we don't get a picture of him taking the test here. Um, so you can see it was real. Um, we get an indication of whether he was uh, credible or deceptive. Uh, we can see the the number of unexpected answers, 0%, no, 33% here. So I don't know, Russ, did you answer intentionally one of those opposite the way we expect? Um, must have. Either that or maybe it didn't understand uh, what he said, but that would have, maybe that is the unrecognized answer here. Um, but anyway, you, you, see, you see the outcomes. So that's the employment test. Let's go look at, um, come back in here, go back to the test results. And now you can see that it has scored and processed uh, on the server the identity validation test that uses the data sites. Uh, in the test, you should have heard it say, you know, is your name Russ Warner or are you Russ Warner? Are your eyes green? And if we go into this here, um, once again, he wasn't holding the phone in the right position, so we don't get a picture in the in the first screen. And um, th this is using data sites where the data is data that the customer doesn't want us to see, the PII. 
that the customer doesn't want us to see. So when I come down here and look at the report, you'll notice that all we see is um, something uh, in the preamble that says that you're going to be asked if your legal name is first name, last name. So this is something we don't see. It's something that um, is being served up from a question server, and it requires you, uh, the implementer, where you don't want this information shared with us, to um, you know compile that together. Now, this is a demo. So we're showing you the photos that normally would go back to the question server uh, as well, but you can see the flexibility in being able to not let us see certain things um, and, uh, and completely automate the process. So with that, uh, we're gonna switch now. Uh, Russ is, has accessed the Teams meeting from his mobile phone. Um, and he's going to share his screen on his mobile phone so that you can see him operating. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to show two things, right? The gear and the test status. Yep. In the upper right corner of the screen, you see a gear. It's a settings icon. If I click on it, the menu pops up and indicates that I'm currently running in solo mode. A few moments ago when I ran the test, I was in proctor mode. Here you can change this, but this is just a like a an about message. It tells you the solo mode you're in, that you're in solo mode, your version and build number. If I click on the word build number seven times, a new menu appears where I can switch my phone to proctor mode in the event I want to run multiple tests on others. I can also skip the tutorial in the event I'm a proctor and I've already explained this information to someone. I can even skip the practice test if that's important or needed in this case. Um, you'll, you'll notice at the bottom of the page, anything else caught on these on these items before I go to the demo? Just that some people would ask about the flashlight on the uh, on the iPhones. We can actually control the, the brightness of the flashlight. Uh, unfortunately, the lowest setting that uh, Apple allows us to apply programmatically is 25% of the light. On Android phones, Google has not given access uh, through an API to change the brightness of the flashlight. So one of the things you might do is if you're using this in proctor mode, you could turn the flashlight off. That's the last option in that list. And then you could uh, attach, um, you know, a, a nice small soft light just below the phone on the selfie stick, so that you're still illuminating the eyes and reducing the likely likelihood of getting reflections in the eyes. Um, but by default, that that flashlight is turned on in solo mode. Uh, it's something that you can't control unless you knew how to get in here and turn it off. Technically, you could do that, but you're at the risk of us not being able to get good data if you take the test in an environment where the lighting is bad, get lots of reflection or whatever else. Um, the last thing here that Russ is showing is this option to take a demo test. If you click on that, it will run uh, a standardized demo test as if we had sent you a link. Um, it's run completely self-contained on the phone. So if you say, well, I want to see the report after, uh, there is no report because it is literally just launching. Um, it's an actual test, but it's self-contained on, 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 the, on the phone. Um, uh, and it will give you the ability to, to see how it works, uh, see where you need to position the phone um, and experience it from end to end. Um, so you can play with that yourself. If you've downloaded the app already from the App Store, um, then as Russ mentioned, you get into this menu by tapping the build number seven times uh, in succession fairly quickly, and then that will pop up. Um, the method of doing that um, is, is actually a very common method on Android phones in situations where you want to make more advanced features available but you don't want those readily available to the lay user. Um, you can um, 
you know, go tap the build number seven times on other Android app, apps, especially, and it will open this up. So it's not not that we're trying to hide it. It's just that, you know, for the typical user that you're going to send a, a link to, um, they, you know, they wouldn't know that. They wouldn't see it or easily stumble across it. Okay. Next, in the upper left corner of the screen, you see three dots, basically. Oh, before I do that, I want to go back to my text message. Go back to text message and copy the last link. Let's copy it. And go back to the app. So let's assume that you're a proctor and you are going, you've scheduled 10 people to be tested today. When I go into this menu or the screen, we call it the test status screen. I'm going to click the add test from clipboard blue button at the top. And because I just copied something in the clipboard and I'm allowing it, what essentially happens is <clears throat> the test that I just ran, which I finished, and it actually shows you right here. Um, first of all, the the the, num the six digit number, are, I believe, are the last six digits of that extremely long test link. The status is finished. It tells you the date and time. Um, I could make notes for myself. Now you could go through. <clears throat> hey Russ, the other the, the other approach is you could log in to the dashboard from your phone. So through a web browser, you log into the dashboard and you go create a link manually like like I did. Um, and remember I mentioned that there are three options. One is to email it. Another is to copy it, and then the other, the last one was to run it. You could actually run the test right after you create the link if you do it from your phone. And then you could cancel, you could, you know, after it starts to run, you could cancel out of it. And it would show up canceled in this list here, or that it that it downloaded but was never run. That would be the status. And um, and then you could come back and run it, or you could copy it from the dashboard, kind of like Rustus did in terms of copying a valid link from the text te text message, and you could put it in here. And as Russ did, he, he put in Rust test. So if you knew you were going to go proctor, you know, five tests, you knew who was going to take them and which tests they were, uh, you could queue them up in advance so that you have them sitting on your phone that you're going to run the test from. Uh, put in, you know, some identifier with it, and then um, you come in here and just click resume. Um, you could have it resume uh, prior to the EULA being accepted, and um, um, still let them accept the EULA and accept the consent form and so forth, and take the test in proctor mode. We do appreciate your time and attention, everyone. Of course, if you have questions after the fact and you don't know where to send them, send any emails to info at .com. Again, grateful for your time and attention. If you go to our website, you'll find more, much more information on Verify. Uh, just start on the home page and you'll, you'll see it immediately. Uh, anything else, Todd? No. OK, I, then we will bid you adieu for another 12 months. Thanks, Thank everybody. You.